Welcome back. Kate here on day six of your seven day challenge. We are starting to wrap up. Hopefully you've been following along pretty well. Hopefully you are getting through the detox phase. A lot of people, you're still kind of coming out of that slump. That's okay. Drink water, show yourself grace, um, and just be, be mindful and, and take it easy. Keep, keep up on everything. You're almost out of the woods. Uh, we are going to talk about vegetables today and runner's trots and lots of like kind of bowel issues. So it goes, um, but we're going to get into that and then start to wrap up for day seven. So listen in and let's get to that. Now, vegetables are kind of like herbs and spices. They are full of magic. <laughs> they are amazing. And they do not contribute heavily to carbs, fat, or protein. Um, so they are great for, for feeling full and helping if you do have weight loss goals. But vegetables are the other place where the magic happens. The fiber, the vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, and more. They help with eye health, heart health, immune system, detoxing, digestion, and more. The goal right now is just two fist sizes, but if you can tolerate more, go higher. There's pretty much no limit to this if you don't have a medical issue. The more, the better, raw or cooked, preferably a little mix of each, and just get a lot of color. Now, do you hate vegetables? I hear that a lot. And I really encourage you, try different methods, try different recipes, steam, roast, saute, shred them, have them raw, put certain ones in smoothies, make soups out of them. So many people who've told me that they, quote, hate all vegetables, as long as they're willing to experiment, they end up finding out that they just never have liked a method by which the vegetables have been prepared. Maybe they grew up on like canned green beans or overcooked broccoli. It was just mushy and gray and flavorless. But once they tried new things, they learned that there were things that they didn't mind and sometimes things they really even liked. And then they were able to provide tastier options for their families as well. So their kids who used to hate vegetables started realizing, hey, I don't mind Brussels sprouts so much, believe it or not. Even, you know, maybe they added a little bacon and honey, but it gets them started. So keep trying, ask for ideas, check on Google and Pinterest, wherever, look at cookbooks at the library and just keep experimenting. Don't give up on this one easy. They are so, so important. So while some people currently cannot handle certain vegetables or certain amounts, we should be able to, even with long run times. They are so critical to good health. They support the entire body from your heart, your bones, brain, cells, blood sugar regulation, and more. They help fight against and protect against cancer. They support healthy blood pressure. It can, they can reduce inflammation and aid in workout recovery. They are rich in vitamins and minerals, and they are rich in fiber, which feed the good bacteria that we need. Now, we dive much deeper into bacteria in the Gut Health Foundation's master course. Uh, we'll get into like good bacteria, bad bacteria, prebiotics, probiotics, spore biotics, bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, and so on. But for now, just know that getting a lot of fiber is good. Maybe, though, if you're still working through some stuff, just not right before a big event. So quick note before we slide into the next slide. Um, we're going to talk bowel habits. So get ready. Don't be squeamish. This is the Bristol stool chart. Really important and beneficial when talking to people with GI issues, specifically um, IBS, etc. But the idea here, we do need to poop. We should ideally have one to three bowel movements per day. One to two is pretty much average. Three, I feel like depends on the person, um, how much they're eating, how much they're moving and, and what it's like. And it should be in this type three to four. Well-formed, solid, but not hard and fairly easy to pass. Conventional medicine says, well, some people just don't need to go as often, maybe once every three days, but that's for defining and diagnosing constipation. That is not about optimal health. Um, but for optimal health, the functional medicine model, you need at least one bowel movement per day, maybe two, and they should be in this type three to four. Now, people who are more active or eat more food may eliminate more waste than someone who's on a lower calorie, lower total food intake. But regardless, 
we're always looking for that type three or type four as a good indicator for consistency. If you see a lot of these type one and type two, that could be as simple as a lack of fiber, a lack of water, or just a lack of, of movement, like walking or jumping or, or anything like that. We need movement. Chronic constipation is not good due to the toxic waste sitting in your colon for longer periods of time. These are usually harder because they're absorbing more of the water. And with that, they're also absorbing back more of those eliminated things that we're trying to detox, trying to get rid of. So we do see an increased risk of colon cancer. And if your body isn't properly eliminating hormonal waste, your body may stop trying to make those hormones. We talked about that with the thyroid hormones before, that the thyroid hormones go through a whole series of steps, this whole assembly line to be made, activated, taken in by the cells, used and broken down to have the byproducts and waste eliminated or excreted. But if the waste and used up hormones are not getting properly eliminated, the body may say, hey, slow down on the production of thyroid hormones. We're getting a bottleneck up here. So we see thyroid get affected. And this can also happen with sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone and other hormones in the body. So you should have at least one good bowel movement per day. Types five, we're seeing this kind of soft blobs with, with uh, clear cut edges. Often that means we just need more fiber, uh, possibly slowing down motility or improving digestive enzymes. So it might just be moving through undigested. So eat lots of plants, beans, and good roughage, time it appropriately with your workouts. And you can temporarily use some fiber powders and supplements to help. But remember the long game for your body to function properly on its own and not need supplements like that. And now if you are seeing type six or seven, that usually indicates much larger issues. It could be bacterial problems, infection, a lot of inflammation, trauma, uh, vagal nerve issues, or more. So if you are constantly seeing type one and two, and it's not getting better with water fiber and movement, or you are constantly seeing types five, six, or seven, we definitely want to talk. Another thing we see here with the five, six, and seven is you're just not absorbing enough nutrients. And so you might not be getting full energy and health. This is the main area in the colon is where you reabsorb electrolytes. If we, we looked at each part of the body. So when it comes to that, this is where a lot of like sodium and electrolytes get absorbed from food. And if your body is just flushing that out, we see all sorts of symptoms, fatigue, lightheadedness, weakness, difficulty regulating blood pressure, dehydration, poor recovery, more aches and pains, muscle stiffness, and more. So we want to address these. So essentially, if you are not regular with one to three, types three to four each day, let's talk. We want to fix that. A bit of a segue for these runners who start to notice GI distress during a run. This, for those of you not familiar, is the dreaded runner's trots. The, the need to have a bowel movement every time you run or almost every time you run. It is real. It is very uncomfortable. It is very frustrating. I have more than once, um, years ago now, fortunately, uh, been caught more than a mile out from home running in my neighborhood. And all of a sudden it's like you clench and you don't know if you should run home because that jostles more or you try to walk, but that's going to take longer. And sometimes you even just have to stop and just try to clench to the point you're sitting there going, which neighbor's door can I knock on, you know, and I don't know all my neighbors a mile away from my home, like whose door am I going to knock on and say, I need to use your bathroom. Like, it's just not great. And it's not what we want to deal with. Um, so having a bowel movement every time you run is not normal, or, or should I say is, is addressable. We can address it. Fiber is one of several factors that does play into it. Um, you know, fiber, it's found in many foods, most abundant in vegetables. It can be difficult to digest, but it has a lot of health benefits. Now it does add to that GI distress for some, because again, it's not being digested. That's the point of it. It, instead of being digested by us, helps sweep things out that need swept out and it feeds the good bacteria. They eat those fibers that we can't. So you might need to just try reducing fiber-rich foods before a race or a long training session to help avoid that runner's trots. But if you find you cannot yet tolerate it, you can then sort of include some fibers to help bulk. And you want to look soluble and insoluble. So if you're struggling with this, you might want things that are more oats, 
peas, beans, apples, citrus, nuts, and seeds. These are things that can help bulk and solidify and less fruit skins, whole grains, and brown rice. These are things that more are sweeping. They're insoluble. However, some other notes that go beyond just the typical fiber recommendations, other things that affect GIs uh, and runners, you may want to try avoiding salicylic acid, NSAIDs, and painkillers if possible. So this is Motrin, Advil, and the other things. Once again, this was talked about in that, that episode, that podcast episode with the pharmacist, but these all affect the gut as well and can damage the GI long-term. It, it's okay. I take Advil here and there, but um, when I was younger, I had a lot of pain as a fifth grader playing soccer. And the doctor's recommendation was just take, you know, two to four Advil before, during, and, or after a game as needed. So I could be taking like eight tablets within, you know, two hours at, at a game as a fifth grader. I was 10 years old. That is not normal. We need to address the pain, not just keep pumping that. That stuff messes with the gut. Uh, you also want to avoid high sugar and high fructose foods. So those drinks containing glucose and fructose syrups or sweeteners, jams, all of those sugars can also speed up GI issues and just staying well hydrated. Dehydration can worsen GI symptoms. Additionally, start your workouts and events in a state of maximum hydration. Once again, hydration matters. If you are taking carbs during a training uh, run or an event, be sure to have adequate water as well. You don't want to just eat the gels and have no water. Those concentrated carbohydrates, whether that's drinks or gels, um, there's something called osmolality. So you, you want to have that well, uh, well before a workout instead of right before. Those, that concentration can add to GI distress. And essentially, this kind of comes down to trialing new strategies because everybody's different. The reactions uh, for one person to a food or nutrition plan can be very, very different than how another person is going to react to a specific food or timing plan. What works for one person may not work for another. So you're going to have to trial and error some things. So other factors that play into the runner's trots or GI issues, nerves or jitters. It's not uncommon if you've been training for a big event and all of a sudden you're there and you're surrounded by people and it's excitement. Even if you're not competing, there can just be more adrenaline, more, more jitters going on. That spinal alignment, running can, if you don't have good form when you run and you, you hunch or you lean, you could be putting strain on the spine that pinches the nerves that could be hyper triggering your, your digestive tract and stimulating that movement. Sugars, too much sugar causes more poo. Uh, food timing, we've talked about a little bit. The hormone cycles. Levels of progesterone are correlated. When we have low progesterone, we have more loose stool. And that can happen around period time. So there's different cycles when progesterone is higher and lower. And there's, there is a normal cycle to it. But if you're going too high or too low at any time and your progesterone and estrogen ratios are out, that adds to GI issues. The gut microbiome, we can have um, bad bacteria. We can have pathogens. We can have potential autoimmune triggers. We can have bile issues, digestive enzymes. So whatever's going on with the gut digestion and microbiome can play into it. So this, once again, can take some trial and error to determine your food sensitivities, your gut microbes, and all of that. Or we can just dive in with the MRT test and GI map and actually tailor that program and, and resolve a lot of that. So if you feel like you're not seeing a whole lot of prog progress with this seven days and you don't want to just trial and error different types of fiber, maybe the types of carbs and meal timing, reach out. You can try to do a lot of this on your own and some people do great with that, but other times it just, just get the answers. Tests don't guess. We can set up a one-on-one -on -one call to discuss diving deeper into labs to get you feeling better fast, heal up your digestive system in a very unique and personalized way and help you hit those PRs, help you get back to those events. So check out your email for links. As four-time winner of the Boston Marathon, Bill Rogers said, more marathons are won or lost in the porta toilets than at the dinner table. Because again, a healthy and balanced diet, while it's important, doesn't have as much of an impact if your body cannot utilize the foods properly, if you are in the bathroom all the time. I've had people who with IBS go into the bathroom seven to 10 times a day, and just in removing their personal food triggers, 
getting them down to one to three bowel movements a day, they suddenly were absorbing all those nutrients so much better. They had more energy. Uh, I had some of them saying, I'm not even working out, but I'm putting on muscle just because I'm absorbing again. And I'm able to actually just do more chores around the house. So I, they were gaining muscle, losing fat just because they didn't lose it all in the toilet seven to 10 times a day. So we need our guts to be right. If you've been putting the right foods in all week and still struggling with GI issues, set up a call to talk about it or sign up for the master course to learn more about what may be going on. So that's it for today. Wrapping that up, vegetables are one of the most important food groups from a health and nutrient standpoint. And there are different types of fiber with different roles in health and different GI tolerance. So you're going to have to mix and match, experiment as needed with the types of foods and the timing and the serving sizes. So we talked about um, the number two secret for success at the beginning of this course, planning and prepping. And tomorrow... In addition to getting your way out and redoing your symptom survey as we wrap up, we are going to talk about the number one secret to success. So stay tuned uh, and then we'll wrap it all up and discuss options for your next steps and what to do from here. In closing down, it is time to get that after data. So tomorrow, get your way out, plan to redo your symptom score so you can see what changes occurred in seven days. For some, it is really impressive. For others, it's a really good first step, but then you wanna keep going. And yet for others, uh, there is that deeper barrier keeping you from healing and you are going to need to get some more puzzle pieces in place. So we'll discuss all of those options tomorrow with the wrap up so you can decide what's right for you. So your accountability task today, since vegetables are so important, yet often where people struggle the most to find ways to enjoy them or get their family to enjoy them, please share your favorite vegetable recipe with the group. Whether you want to take a picture of it after you've made it or just share a link or just share the, the recipe itself in text, post it to the Facebook group and use hashtag 7DC. As always, the links you need for today are in your email. If you have any questions, post them in the group. Stay strong, stay empowered, and I cannot wait to help you wrap this up tomorrow for day seven. See you then.